I've done my safety checks. The screen's not on. Uh, the normal speed is 1120. Uh, I may go down to 680. I want 9,000 speed. What's my first cut on the diameter? What am I trying to do? Should we review our strategy? Uh, yeah. Our rough and thread diameter. So our strategy with this part is to start by holding on here and roughing this down. Remember, this stock is an inch and three quarters. This is an inch and a half thread, and we're going to rough it down to about 50 thousandths oversize. Very quick, gets that extra stock out of the way, so it'll be a 200 thousandths cut, and we'll just do it. We don't care if it's 50 or 45 thousandths oversize. We just don't want lots and lots of metal on there. So, yeah, I'm going to go one and seven eighths to two inches. I'll move my cutter in to the very farthest it's going to go and give it a spin to make sure I'm not going to hit the jack. And this is a part where you're really going to experiment with chip control. And I'm going to demonstrate that several places in this cut. Okay, I'll start with a hundred thousandths cut at 1120 RPM at 9,000 speed. We'll see what the chips do. We don't want them to break too short. We want them to make at least one complete curl. We don't want them long and stringy. We don't want them flying up in our face. So I'll make a shallow cut, 100 thousandths. There's my touch off. Set my zero. And I'll go in 100,000. Watch the chips. That's what's important on this. Spray it up in my face. 200,000. Spray it up in my face. Continuous. Uh, 
3000 LCQ4W. This is not cutting like the 1018. That's weird. Um, I should be getting blue chips out of this. We'll see. I'm going to take a finished cut. <laughs> now, I'm going to just get the surface to keep it tucking on. Now it's all the same thing. Notice the color of the chips. Now you're getting chips that have changed color. They're heating up hot enough to turn golden or brown or deep blue or purple or even sky blue. Golden is about 600 degrees. Sky blue on the other end is about 950 degrees. But that's normal with cutting uh, steel with carbide. Okay. You don't need coolant. Uh, and on the on the free machining steel that used on the bushings, you didn't usually get much coloration because it doesn't heat up enough. Okay, so we're, we just did our whole first end. And I forgot to get a file. Can I borrow your file? That file. I'm just going to deburr. Go down to a low speed. Just roll it around the corner. Okay, who knows the next step? Power down. Flip the part. Flip the part. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. Get too far. There we go. Now I want an inch to hold on to. An inch in the chuck, two inches stick out. And I'm going to true up on this diameter. Do we? You were going to say? I was going to say, do we have to reset this? Well, let's see what's happening. Yeah, I can see it going up and down. Now, if you have enough stock on here, it can be off-center, but how much? Depends on how much stock you've got. And you don't really want it way off-center because it creates balance problems. It starts vibrating. So, general practice, prove it up. Most of the time when people don't want to true something up, it's because they don't like truing up because they're having a hard time with it. So if you find that's true, get help because we can make it easy. Okay, find the low side, loosen it, find the high side, tighten it. The low side, loosen it, and the high side, Tighten. You'll learn how much to loosen and how much to tighten. When it's within about five or ten thousandths, just tighten the high sides. And then go all around and tighten all four jaws and make your final corrections. What, two minutes? Okay.
more stratosphere. Even though the, the dimensions on the part are three inches overall length and the thread length is dimension one and a half inches, we're going to cut the stem to one and a half inches as a reference measurement because we know that if we make it one and a half inches accurately, then when this is three inches long, this will be one and a half inches, so we'll be able to measure those off. So, uh, we want to start by dropping the stem without the radius, and if the length of the stem with the radius is one and a half, and it's a quarter inch radius, how long are we, how, what length are we roughing the stem to? One and a half minus one quarter. Okay. One and a half minus one quarter is one and one quarter. Got my handy dandy scale. Deeper the part so I don't cut myself marking it. inches is right at the edge of my large diameter. So it's right there. That's how far I'm going to go. I don't need to be exact. I'll finish that length afterward. So, I have a cutting plan. I'm going from 1 inch 750, and I'm roughing the stem down to 1 inch to 1 inch 10 thousandths. So, 1 inch 10 thousandths, that's a total of 740 thousandths. It's a lot to take off. I'm going to divide that up into into several bytes. You have a choice you can make. I can do it in three uh, quarter inch bytes, 250 thousandths. That's a lot of stock. I'll show you that. You can do it in 200 thousand bytes or 150 thousand bytes, but don't do it in 50 thousandths or 100 thousandths. You're beyond that. You've already done your bushings cutting 200 thousandths, right? Has anyone not taken a 200 thousandths cut? Okay, so everybody has. You're okay with it. You want to see a 250 thousandths cut? Yeah. Right. Yes. 250, 200, 200, that's 650, <coughs> and then 90. So I'll take it in one, two, three, four cuts. Any of those ways it will go fast. Zero. So here's one full turn plus fifty thousands. Fifty. 
Another 200,000 is cut. And I'm at uh, one inch seventy seven thousandths, sixty seven, fifty seven, forty seven, thirty seven, twenty seven, and I'll reduce my feed. Um, what am I doing? Under four thousandths LCS, GW, increase my speed. One inch, thirty-one thousandths, twenty-one, eleven, six thousandths. So I want to be between one inch and one inch ten thousandths. something accurate to measure from. Wow, one into two fifty. One is five and a half thousand. Right where I want to be with my rough stem. And that all took less than ten minutes. We will cut all the way around it, but we're only going to, going to be cutting in this quadrant. The I like to use the clock, nine o'clock to one o'clock. This is where you need a clean, smooth cutting edge. If there are nicks elsewhere, it doesn't matter. But if there are nicks or it's dull in here or chipped, then you want to get help taking that insert out and either turning it so that the nine o'clock to one o'clock area is smooth and sharp, or replacing it. I've already set center height. What's key is it's at or below center height. I did not bother facing with it. It's a tiny bit low. And the first thing I want to do, remember what's the first thing I want to do in setting up my uh, radius tool. Uh, set my feet away from the chuck. So I'm going to go to low speed, get it set up for a 4,000 speed. Anywhere in there, three or four thousand feet away from the chuck. Maybe I'll go to five thousand feet, see what kind of finish I get. Uh, away, so when I engage it, the, the carriage is moving away from the chuck with the spindle turning forward. That we have to guarantee. The last thing you want is to have that surprise engage it and have it move into the radius. Okay. I also want to, especially on these lighter machines like the Acras, you're not even going to try this part on the LeBlanc. It's not, the LeBlancs aren't rigid enough for this radius. They'll do everything else just fine. But I'm going to lock up my compound and my cross slide so they have, the compound I'll lock tightly, tight, pressing the screw against it. I need rigidity here. And also, with the cross slide, I'm locking it lightly, so there's some drag on the cross slide. Okay? Don't forget to loosen those when you're done. 
I'm going to cut this radius. This is what we're doing. And I'll cut the final diameter of the stem. I want the stem to be about uh, 10, 5 to 10 thousandths below one inch. So 990 thousandths to 995. I'm going to take this in several bites. I'll be going in. I'll be moving 75 thousandths to the left from here and moving into my zero. Another 75, another 75. Stem long enough. <laughs> Notice how the chatter went away as soon as I engaged the feed. No longer cutting a huge broad surface. Okay. 991 thousandths, right where I want it. But the caliper doesn't have enough reach uh, this way. You have to slam it a little bit. That's what I mean. Uh -huh. oh, no. <laughs> you need to. You'll need to be right out at the corner because everywhere else but this corner is radius. So you can do it with a caliper. And I am right at. Oh, it's a little bit short. One inch, four hundred ninety-four thousand. So I'm going to go back in and make it a little bit longer. Well, that's prime. Aphrodite caliper. We'll use a caliper for this that has a hook on one end and a scribing point on the other. It's called a hermaphrodite. And I'm going to put the scribing point in my one inch mark of my scale and just bring the hooked point up to the end of the scale. It's very accurate. These are very precisely made. I simply place the hooked end on. Do you think it's dry yet? We'll find out. And a nice clear line. Setting up our knurling. Don't set any more than any higher feed rate than that. LCS 4W toward the chuck. We're going to install a flat bottom tool holder, not one with a groove in it. We're going to inspect our knurling tool and we're going to brush it clean. Just so that the, the teeth of the knurling rolls are clean. And we can see that they're in good shape and not chipped.
check the leading edge, the left side edge for chips. If it's chipped on that side, don't use it. When they get chipped on that side, sometimes we reverse them and the trailing edge won't hurt, won't, won't damage the neural. You're going to put a spacer in, a one eighth inch spacer behind it to hold the knurling tool, the shank out even with the edge of the tool holder so that so that so that this doesn't bind on the tool holder. Okay? Now, what did I forget to do after I did my radius cut? Probably not in your notes. Undo. No, I need to loosen these. Unlock my my weight, my uh, slide. That would cause excessive wear if we leave that lock. Okay. So. Uh, first thing I want to do, I've set up my feed. I want a low RPM of no more than 180 RPM. I'm going to go with 110. I need to square up my tool post so that the tool will be squared with the machine. And it's easiest to do that with a big boring bar holder, power down, neutral. And you've done this before, just flatten the tool holder against the chuck face. My knurl exactly over the edge of the part. I'm just sighting down it. I'm going to get a one inch travel indicator because the die on the scribe line is useful, but it's going to be covered with oil and little shavings from the knurling tool, so it'll be hard to see. And I'm going to travel one inch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now I'm going to reset my indicator so I don't have to try to count ten revolutions but rather just one. That's my lazy guy's indicator. So I'll see it start to move, and I'll watch it feed up there, and I'll stop right at the zero. That way I can I have a measurement that I can see what's going on. My My neural depth and uh, set the nut and set my in feed and out feed marks <clears throat> so I begin by making sure that the neural is loose because I need to touch off okay I start with the neural rolls half on and half off the part so it's Half of it is on the end of the part and half of it is off in the air. We want to get our neural depth and our neural pattern without it having to force the whole width of the neural in. I hold the bottom arm down, which holds the bottom neural against the part and the top neural up because they're linked together. I run it back and forth. You see that the top one does not turn, but the bottom one does. Okay. I can look and see how far it is. It's pretty close. I can turn it in. And we can see now that the top neural turns for a moment when I go across the largest diameter. Everybody see that? 
See it? Turning. Okay. That's almost touch off. It's touching, but it's got a little bit of play, so I'm going to go another half of a flat of the nut. And that's going to be my touch off. Okay. Now I know that the knurls are, both of them are touching the part and they're under the force of the nut. I'm going to dial this in three and one half flats. One flat, two flats, three flats, one half of a flat so that the point is sticking out. It means that the point, the, the peaks come up to diamond points, like a pyramid, a four-sided pyramid. You can check that with a glass if you need to. And it should be a single pattern, not a fine double pattern. Anybody want to look at this? You can see that the peaks are complete. If they're not complete, they'll look like volcanoes with a little crater in the middle. Because the metal is being pushed up and folded over. If it's too deep, you'll have a burr at the left edge here where it's pushing metal out that way. Okay? All right. So my pattern is good, and I'm ready to go. I'm going to bring it into my zero. Mark is there. I'm going to get my oil ready. I'm going to start it. I'm going to engage my feet. You'll keep a steady dribble of oil on it the whole time. Steady stream. But it has to be a lot of oil and it has to flush the little chips and shavings away. It's not cutting, it's mashing, but metal flakes off. Do not be tempted to brush it to clean it up. It will grab the brush and chew it up and mess up the knurl. take it over to the wire wheel. Okay, it's a single pattern. Notice the big burr here. So it looks like it's more than an inch long, but it's not. When the burr is gone, the, uh, the extra length will be gone. If the pattern's not complete, you can go over it again with a slight adjustment or just try a, a, a spring pass. The knurling tool is going to be an oily mess. Please, please, please clean it up nicely. Or else it soaks the box and soaks the drawer. Wipe the oil off as much as you can because it's going to make smoke when you get it with the turning tool.
uh, I've actually made it a, a deeper chamfer than I need to, but it looks nice. I'm not measuring your chamfer. It's a corner break. Don't worry about it. You just don't want sharp edges here. Okay. Now we're ready to switch over to a collet chuck and prepare to cut. That's an R8 collet. These are a 5C collet, so it's a different size uh, range, but it includes, it goes in increments of a 64th of an inch. want it to overlap because then it will be twice as thick there. Mm -hmm. You measure it. You have to compress it with the mic because it's curved. What is this radial magic? Five thousandths of an inch. You install the collet in the collet holder by aligning the keyway with the key button inside here. Yeah. And you put the sucker on. Turning the ring so that it. So then it pulls the collet back into the hole. Okay, can you see it going in? Yeah. Can you see? It's a cool planetary gear setup. Wow. There's a tiny gear here, and three little spider gears here, turning a ring with a thread on it. Then, you slip the shim most of the way over the stem, put the shim into the collet. Can everybody see this? before the stem goes in and work the stem in so that the shim ends up covering the, the neural part of the stem. Does everybody see it? Yeah. And you want to hold on to the entire length of the neural, but not beyond that. If you go beyond that, you're not holding on to anything because it's smaller. Okay? And now you tighten this up until with your foot on the brake and the machine in low gear, you can't tighten it anymore. You've got to be really tight. Okay? So that's how you're going to hold on to it with a collet chuck. If you don't have a collet chuck available to you, <coughs> you're going to make a double layer of copper shim. And I'll get one from my toolbox that I have. The collet, and that's why my windshield never fits right. The collet will not damage the neural, but yeah. the the chuck will. Uh -huh. It'll flatten it. So you yeah. put a double layer of copper in, and you're going to true it up. It's a little bit trickier than the collet because the collet will true the whole thing up very nicely. But you don't need to let it. You don't use the other one. If you don't, if, if everybody else has gotten the collet chucks before you. I can do this or you're fucked. Then you true it up in a four dog. Copper will protect the neurons. So you tighten it up nice and tight and you screw it up. Five hundred and sixty-two. So another fifty thousand.
My thread length is now one inch five hundred and one thousandths. And you've got plus or minus ten. Now we'll go for our diameter. And what am I doing? Oh, I'm changing inserts. Changing over to my finishing insert. Go for a relatively fine feed, three or four thousandths. LCS2W. And this is for my major diameter. This is about one inch five fifty, so I'm going to go down thirty thousand for my test cock. Out the wrong stock. <laughs> okay, I'm at one inch five oh eight there. Preparation remaining is to cut my front and back chamfers. I'm going to introduce a new tool to you. Excuse me. Back of it, it shows the front chamfer. It doesn't specify either of them. I'm I'm having you, having you cut standard thread chamfers front and back on all of these parts. And in order to cut this, we wouldn't be able to cut this back chamfer this way with our standard turning tool because the flank of the tool will run into the body. If we use a profiling tool, which is a turning tool with a narrow angle, we can. Okay, we can set our compound to 45 degrees. But we can also use our good old chamfer tool, 45 degree chamfer tool. Usually set center height, a little tiny bit below the center point on our part. And it'll cut just fine. So I'm gonna be in the cut for a minute. Once again, we're reminded why we ground our tool so carefully. So that we can simply flatten it against the tool. Now, 
On your bushings, you were cutting precision chamfers by moving in on the z-axis. Now we're going to move in on the x-axis to cut from this diameter to the inner diameter that we want. We want an inner diameter of 10 to 20 thousandths below this. So this is 1 inch 397 and 8 tenths. Let's call it 1 inch 400 thousandths. So we want 300, 1 inch 380 to 1 inch 390 inside diameter. And we have currently an outside diameter. of 1 inch 495. And what did I say? 1 inch 395. So we're going to touch off to the corner the way we usually do. I'll need to file this to get rid of the burr. I'll put some color on it. I'll bring my chamfer, I'll put the point of my chamfer tool to the left of the, the edge. So I know the point isn't going to dig into it. I'll bring my cross feed in until it touches, until it takes the color off, makes a little silver ring, and I'm just going to go in a hundred thousandths. It's going to change the diameter by a hundred thousandths. If I want to make sure, I'll go in 110,000. That's it. You can do the same thing on the right side, or you can set your compound to cut it the same way you have on the bushing. Which one do you want to see? I mean, we already have it set up this way. Okay. Hold my zero. Dial in until I got first chip. Go in. Hundred ten thousandths. I've got my thread really thread jam. And yes, I've got front of my part is undersized. I boo boo. I'm ready to thread. Okay. See here. It's just a little base that mounts on the on the fish tail on the center gauge. It clips on there and stays. I forgot I even had it, and I discovered it in my toolbox. How to do this? Okay, first I'm going to clean off underneath so I can put a piece of paper under it so I can see. Look down through, and I push the tool in with the cross slide until the sides of the tool line up perfectly with the sides of the gauge. Okay. 
Anyone want to look? I believe you. Okay. You look straight down through there to see the light coming through. If there's any light on either side of the tool, between the tool and the gauge, you must redo the alignment. Okay, I, if I go any faster than 70 or at the most 110 on this, it's going to make the oil smoke. So I'm restricted on that. And if the oil smokes, I'll just take lighter cuts. I've set my compound dial to zero. I've set my cross-feed dial to zero. I'm holding the dial. I'm cranking the cross-feed in until it touches off and makes a mark. For those who don't remember threading, you're going to want to do a practice thread. Just grab a piece of one and a half inch stock, the bushing stock, cut a quick thread relief in it, cut a chamfer, and practice cutting threads. It'll help you build your confidence. Track, return, zero return, stop and check pitch. Every point has to match. If you're not sure, check the next finer and the next more coarse. Ten thousand first cut. And since this is twelve threads per inch, it is an even multiple of the lead screw, and it's one of the pitches on acros that you can cut on any line of the thread dial. So this is carbide. This is how fast this could be cut. But it's hard to engage the threat, the, the half nut on the dial accurately at that speed. Spread it up a little bit. I'm going to slow down and use oil. Keep it fully coated with oil, and that will help prevent smoke.
Remember, we use the cross slide as a zero return and retract tool. And do our infeeds with the compound until we are our ten thousandths of an inch or less above the maximum pitch diameter. Make one more cut after this and start measuring. It'll be a very small cut. to measure accurately with a, as the same as the thread wires. You tighten them until they are a friction fit over the thread. They'll actually stay in place, but you can slide the anvil through the thread. And I'm seeing one inch 447 thousandths. So we're not far above our high limit. That's fine. And I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. If you don't, if you remember how to use the three wires, I'll just go on and complete the threading. Slide it up from the right hand wire. Slide it in. Hold the mic vertical so the wires don't fall out. Tighten it just like a regular micrometer fit. Wiggle it sideways to check your centering. And measure. 543. Yeah, we're uh, 538 and 7, 539, so I'm four thousandths above the high limit with this. And I was three thousandths above it with this. Okay, so it's time for me to make my finished cuts. I'm going to go to minus two on the cross slide. No more in feeds with the compound. It's a two thousandths cut, and it is cutting on both sides of the insert. 
minus 2 retract, return, minus 2 return, I'm going to go to minus 4, and hopefully that will be my last cut, we'll see, we'll see if it's in the tolerance and fits the game. So the top says you want us to have a decent turn It's the two hole. You've got time to do that yeah. and get into the blind hole. Minus four retract. Turn. Minus four return. Somebody and, and the newer one is tighter. Now this is tightening up. So I'll check my pitch diameter. Yeah, this is the go. Just under the maximum. My thread profile is good. Red form is good. They should go on all the way. There it goes. Watch your hands here. While you're turning this, you can get cut on the thread. No go. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay. One and a half turn. Okay, so it's a good trade. Slightly over the tops of the threads, turn it to 45 degrees, hit the front chamfer, roll around the front chamfer, and then get the edge in repeatedly, and let it follow the thread, no pressure, 
on it. And with the other leg, push it forward lightly and run it off the back of the thread. Roll it there. Okay. And then reverse the spindle to catch the, the back chamfer and get the birds out of there. Any roughness. Then with your thread file, the triangle file, let it follow the threads, just lightly brushing birds off the flanks. Beginning, the end, and the middle should all feel perfectly smooth with no danger of cutting you at all. If that will cut you, it will cut your friends.